questioning. And the Screen Magazine, in its second issue, tried to explain to me the Hello, my name is Dean Kartover, and this is the History Show. Uh, every week we try to interview a veteran uh, from one of the wars that we fought in, in the United States, and today I have a Richard Gouch Gauthier. Uh, Gouch is his nickname. He was a Vietnam veteran. He was in the United States Air Force. What we'll do with this uh, uh, program, we'll archive it and send it down to the Library of Congress. So if you know anyone that's a veteran, please ask him to call Chimps Tell Media, and uh, we'll get him on the show. Um, Gouch was um, in the Air Force, went to basic training in Lackland Air Force Base, was a K-9 handler. K-9 handler means he handled dogs for security. Uh, went to uh, uh, school for 28 weeks at Lackland Air Force Base and was uh, assigned to Okinawa for um, 15 days. And then what happened is he uh, uh, was assigned, he got orders to go to Vietnam with his dog. And what was your dog's name? Uh, uh, Lucky. Lucky. And he was assigned to uh, uh, Tonsonut Air Force Base in Saigon. It was uh, one of the uh, busiest uh, uh, bases in the world uh, with flights coming in almost every minute. And his job was to uh, secure the perimeter with his dog. Um, usually it was at nighttime. All it was the time. Always it, at nighttime. it was always at nighttime. And um, last week he uh, told us a, a story uh, what happened in regards to security. So if you want to continue that story about the... Uh, the Vietnamese, I think. Well, it was on the, uh, right on the base. We have a perimeter uh, quadrant off section of captured um, weapon tree from the enemy, and it's guarded by three layers of fences and one canine dog handler and his dog. And at one night after they were unloading all the uh, captured weapons, and they closed the gates up, I always let my dog roam around free, even though he's a kill dog and you can't command them back, but it was all fenced in by three different fences. And one night I, I let the dog after everybody supposedly had left, and I hear my dog ripping apart something, growling, and I hear somebody yelling. I run running back there with my weapon locked, locked and loaded, and there was a South Vietnamese soldier who had decided to put up a hammock and take a nap for the night. My dog ripped him by, by the leg and it was chewing on his leg, ripping him, trying to get him out of the hammock and stuff. And I had to choke my dog off him until he, he let go of the guy's leg. And the guy hobbled. I had called up headquarters and told him what happened to my sergeant. And the, and the South Vietnamese soldier went out. I opened up the gate to get him out of there. He went to his truck. And then he come back with his rifle saying, I shoot your dog. I shoot your dog. Well, as a kill dog handler, first, you protect the property. Second, you protect your dog. Third, you protect me. So when he raised his rifle up, I had to let him have it. I let a burst go, and I had to kill the South Vietnamese soldier because he was where an unrestricted area, and he was. I got a general court martial, but I got found probable cause, and nothing ever happened mm -hmm. to me. Usually, the court martial, they give you a medal. Yeah, uh, but but uh, he, he wasn't a spy or anything. Like no, he was, that. Just I mean, so he was just dumb, self Vietnamese yeah. soldier. Decided to take a nap at the wrong place, <laughs> the wrong time. All right, so you go on per perimeter duty. What's what's the what's it like a perimeter? I mean, it's a busy airport. Planes are coming in and out, and you have to guard this perimeter. What's it, what's this? Is it a square mile or is it is it two square miles at the base or or it's got warehouses? Well, I mean, the base itself is about ten miles. Well, it's kind of I don't know how many miles all around it, but right. in every quarter of a mile, there was a dog hand and a handler right. got in the perimeter of the fences. Right. So you're not really near the airport per se. They fly over you and in back in and over you sometimes, but there's a lot of part of the bases that are guarding like the barracks and, and right. a lot of things. Did you have regular guard, do uh, uh, guard duty? I mean, was there people that had regular guard duty also around the perimeter? Like, did they, they were outside. Towers? They were outside in towers. They were generally the, Viet uh, the South Vietnamese Army. But you had 
places where the gates it was sort of around no there with land. army patrols would go out oh. all the time. Oh, I see. And stuff, and you would go out and clear the path for them a little, you know, and just make sure all the right. dog could tell you if anybody was within a hundred yards. Well, tell me the dog. I, I mean, when when let somebody somebody come into the wire or sapper, as they the call it, the dog will start breathing heavy, okay. <laughs> okay. and then pull you in that direction. Okay, and you you notify everybody. I have a hit. Right. It means the dog has alerted me that something's not right. So then there, everybody in the perimeter knows that it may, there may be intrusions yeah, in other, so they, other they, places. They're all alert. Right. Okay. And then a small group of, you know, a deuce and a half truck yeah. will come out and if you, you tell them you, you hear something, you see something, a bunch of army guys would come out and right. go hunt and look. Okay. Now, um, I remember that they used to, the uh, sappers, the uh, uh, Viet Cong used to put uh, a dog feces on their body. Yeah, but it, didn't, it basically didn't work because the dog at first would hear them going through the, the brush and right. the bushes and stuff. I remember this one South Vietnam, uh, Viet Cong, Zappa, whatever you want to call him. He was coming down, he was trying to go through the airplanes and my dog hit on him. And I let my dog go. And you can see this, and it's hard for a 70 pound guy with depth charges around him to outrun a 110 pound German Shepherd. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> so my dog's going at him at about 60 miles an hour. He turned around and goes, done lie, done lie. That means I quit, I surrender. And these dogs are kill dogs that you can't, all right, come on back, boy. So I, you know, just yell out, too late. <laughs> <laughs> the dog, wham, hits him going about 60 miles an hour, knocks him down, starts ripping at him. And you've got to go out there and take your dog and choke him off. You almost have to choke the dog to unconsciousness to wow. get him off these people. So they're that aggressive, huh? Yeah, they're that aggressive. Right. They're ripping and clawing and stuff. Right. And stuff. You know, and of course. And that guy was unlucky. He was unlucky. Yeah. You know, Poor, and there was a lot of Lucky those took guys care of him. Lucky took care of him. Lucky he took care of him, and then you just call up the QC, the Vietnamese police, and they come and take what's left. Was he deceased? or? No, he wasn't deceased, but he was bleeding, but he was ripped up pretty good. Right. Because, you know, as you're walking down right. the trail to get your dog, you're not really running. <laughs> you know, you're taking your time. <laughs> Why don't we stop and have a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you cracked me it's up. It's war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he... Would have blown me up if he that, had a chance. That's true. You're right. You're right. And and uh, so so, that, any other incidents like that? Uh, I remember once we we all got. Well, I'll give you a real funny one. We were coming back from the perimeter. These 15 K9 guys. We had to put the dog between the legs, so they they fight each other too with the muzzles on. And we got a call that it was payday. You know, the 15th of the month, yeah. first and 15th. Yeah. And down at the uh, the bank on the base, right? There was a robbery going on. Wow! Yeah, two uh, black guys decided they were going to rob it during payday. Uh, you know, take all our money. So they called up the kid. We were on our way by. We got the alert, and we lined up fifteen kill dogs in a big semicircle out the back door. And here comes these two dumb guys with their forty fives running out with the payroll. Boom, they saw us, they turned, excuse the expression, white. <laughs> they, they, we were all laughing. I think the dogs were laughing. They, 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 just, they just say it was they, funny. They surrendered. Oh, they, they surrendered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they dropped those guns and that money so fast. So they, you didn't let the dogs out? No, they, no, they that's knew. all you have to see them. Yeah. That's all you have to see. Yeah, you know, these dogs were 110 pounds. We had them up to 140 pounds. German shepherds, and then and they wanted something to chew on. Okay, so how many guys on the base, roughly? 30, 40, your, your unit, the canine unit? My canine unit, yeah. there was probably about 50 of us. All right. Yeah, some, some dogs, they were called patrol dogs. They weren't kill dogs, per se. Right. They, they were nice dogs. You could pat them and all that, unless right. the dog handler gave them a secret word. Oh, a command or something? A command, oh, oh a secret them, word. We, we all had words that you oh. know, put them on alert. Oh. You know, like, you know, guy from Lowell would probably say, chumps with. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so that's so there was a specific command. Even, but your killer dog, you just let him go. You didn't no, give him yeah, a command. No, yeah, they don't. They don't have they don't. no commands. So what do they do with these dogs after? Unfortunately, you know? that's the saddest part of the whole thing is because of what we made these dogs, they can never be rehabilitated and brought back to the United States. And because of this uh, disease that most of them catch over in Vietnam, they didn't want that to come back to uh, the States. Oh, is that I mean, right? the, talk about the big beetles we have in there. That's the size of ticks where we're over there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and the ticks would get into their skin and infect them, and and so yeah, like, and they didn't want that coming. Sort of like Li States, sort so. of like Lyme disease or something. Unfortunately, like Unfortunately, when you left, most of the dogs, some dogs were able to readjust to other new guys coming in, but most of them had to be put to sleep. Oh, that's the reality of it. Huh? I, I remember when we knew that when we were getting ready to leave, a bunch of us, we thought about commandeering a helicopter and taking them out in the woods and let them go. <laughs> at least, out in the at jungle? Least, at least let them go out fighting. Mm. Interesting. Uh, somebody squealed now, those. Now, now did, uh, did, did you talk to guys who were in the Army and, and, and Marines and, and that were dog handlers in uh, um, Vietnam in regards to how well, they down, handled Well, downtown Saigon, don't forget, I worked during the day and, and at night and during the daytime. I didn't like staying on barracks. I was not military. I had a. I went downtown. Well, that's obvious. Yeah. I went downtown Saigon okay. and got myself uh, a house in a section of Saigon where Americans weren't allowed. That way, there I knew I wouldn't be bothered by anybody. Um, when you were downtown, did you carry a, a, a pistol with you? When oh, you I had. Uh, I had weapons. I used to put a. I had this Czechoslovakian submachine gun capture weapon that I stole from the base and put it under my front porch. So that way everybody rode by, they, they knew that nobody ever bothered us. So you, how many Americans were in this apartment that you had in Saigon? Four of us. The four. So yeah. you pay rent? We paid rent and, and we had four maids. Mm -hmm. What they were was young girls. We took them off the streets, otherwise they would have been prostitutes or whatever mm -hmm. they could do. Oh, well that was nice. And yeah. we, you know, you pay them like, uh, it's it's ridiculous, you know, like twenty bucks a month. But that's not uncommon. I mean, you no, know, no, I mean, everybody a lot did of that. a lot of people do that. that. So 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 you stayed downtown, slept downtown, and then you you got up in the evening. Uh, what time did you go to the base? Probably around six. Around a couple six. Couple hours before I had to did you, to did you get your Did you eat there on base? No, no, no. I ate downtown. I had a nice little uh, Vietnamese restaurant near me that I. That I uh, ate at, you know, and one of the funny things you eat at the restaurant is steak and fries. It's like you do at home, right. except that the steak is puppy steak. They raise the puppies like we raise pigs for Whoa. food. Wow, is that and right? There I am, canine eating. I swear my dog gave me a couple of dirty looks when I had dog <laughs> steaks. <and> I... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so. Your day was you got you got into base. You checked in, uh, you checked in where, where you're going to be assigned uh, yeah. on base. Was it always well, the you same went place? Well, went down to change into your clothes. Okay, but was it the same same position on base? Or the same. Well, you went out to the kennels, and out in the kennels okay. is where you found out what where you where were going to be assigned. Where you, where you okay, got and, that day. and and you were and you were being all night long. It was a night shift. Yes. Hours of darkness. There was nobody taking your place? What happens if you... During the daytime, somebody we would be patrols. Daytime, you can, you know, zappers didn't work at night no, either. The, the enemy didn't do no, it night. No, no, I understand. During the that. daytime, they were the guys that raided on you in the restaurant and gave you a haircut. And at night, they were zappers. I, I won't disagree with that. Um, so, you were... A night, what about going to eat or something like that? What about the dog eating at night? You know, I mean, if you were on from uh, uh, sunset we to... We have the K rations. Okay. And John Wayne specials. They call them John Wayne specials. Only John Wayne could eat them. <laughs> you open them up and, you know, you always share with your dog everything you ate. You shared everything with your dog. Your water, your food. I see. Was, it, was the gla dog glad to see you when you picked up the dog? He, he mostly. 
mostly because they weren't as much glad to see you as know they were getting out of their cage. Right. And they were out, out in the So freedom. someone during the day didn't handle your dog? Well, they, they fed him during the day, but that guy, unknown to them, had to get a hose, a, a powerful hose, and almost pushed the dog to the back of the kennel so he can get in there and give him food and water because he, he would take a guy's arm off if he could. Wow. Because anybody but me is fair game to a kill dog. Right, right. So how many kill dogs did you have on Tunson Air Force Base? Uh, there was probably 50 or 60 of them. Oh, that many? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, so, it's a big Air Force so, Base. So uh, you were there, what, on the base a year? No, I was only there uh, eight months. Eight months? 19 days. So Lucky was your, your dog. Did you have another dog after that? or No. Did, you just stayed with Lucky? Yes. So in your whole time, you handle two dogs, one in basic training, yep. one in your training. That's correct. And 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 lucky uh, for eight months. Yep. Okay. That's, so you never went out in other compounds or anything like that. Yes, I, uh, I had when there was the the ten of seventy two up in uh, Da Nang. Okay. We they uh, called in for reinforcements to uh, put more dogs on the perimeter of what the Da Nang Air Force Base. The Da Nang, yeah. Okay. Because they were coming under a lot of uh, attacks and stuff. Okay. So they, they brought up about 30 or more uh, dogs up there in Anlis. All right. So, so they we were stayed up there for about 45 days. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's, that's a, you know, it's no, out they, in nowhere with nothing to do. And were they penetrating? Uh, they were trying to. to. Yeah. They came through the front gate a couple of times, but they always get, they never made any damage. You know, they were well prepared because of the 10 of 68. They right. were more prepared and stuff for it. Right, right. So, so you were there from what, 71 to 72? Yeah. And the war kind of, the Americans left in 72, right? Three. 73 basically, yeah. all right. So the, so you would then, it was. I was there, I, was, I went home on R&R &R for two weeks, but I had gotten injured about two weeks before that in a rocket attack. I had shattered my kneecaps and uh, dislocated my leg and stuff. When I went to the hospital, I met this real nice captain. He says, you know, that's pretty good. You can get out on that. He says, but if you go to the Army Hospital, they'll probably fix you up and you'll be right back here. W hold off, I'll give you a uh, light duty slip so I didn't have to go out in the perimeter and the shit anymore. Yeah, walk. And so I couldn't walk and stuff until you got home for hour and hour. Then when you get home, go to Fort Devon's Army Base, turn yourself in, and you don't ever have to come back, and that's what happened. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I had to get in. I got about four or five operations, found out I had malaria, which is why I talked this way, because I had to uh, I get some uh, bacterial disease in my vocal cords, and the Army doctors paralyzed it, trying to operate on it, so one of them. So tell me about malaria. I mean, what, what, what happened? I mean, What happens is malaria is a strange yeah. thing. It's almost like you were... During the daytime, it's perfect. You're like nothing. Then at night, you start sweating, you go into fevers, you go into shake. And unfortunately, it was after I had an operation up in uh, the Army Hospital. So they were all concerned. They didn't know what it was at first. Test and test. And now, this is at Fort Devens. Fort Devens yeah, Army. Okay. Right. Taking Fort blood Devons, out of here every four right. hours. Then they figured it out it was malaria. And by then, I was up to like 104.2. So wow. they used to take you up night and dump you in these. Ice beds, oh, that was worse than the malaria. Ice cold beds, and I was so bad for a week that they actually send a priest up from Shirley, Mass where Fort Devens is, yeah. and it was like a, you know, I'm not very religious, even though I am Catholic, but it was like a miracle. This priest walks in, and he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him. He goes, oh my God, and I look, it was the priest I had when I was four, 13 and 14 years old at Shirley Reform School. Wow. Shirley Industrial School for Boys. Wow. He goes, no, God doesn't want you yet, Dick. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, he still doesn't and, want and you. And unbelievably, I, the fever broke, and, and here I am. See, God it doesn't want you. Unbelievable. That's but what he said. Yeah. We both just sat down and laughed about good old days in reform school. <laughs> I used to buff the uh, church floor. What a nice guy you were. You yeah. weren't an altar boy. No. no. Okay, no. Just, just. Not an altar boy. Okay, just checking. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're in, we're in uh, uh, 
Sai, uh, we're, now, you went to Da Nang, you came back to Saigon. Yeah, back to Saigon. Okay. Same routine? Same routine, but there was a guy there from Lowell I knew when he was in charge. He worked with the CIA down at the uh, embassy, U.S. Embassy, and he got me a nice job down there once, and I was down there with the... With your dog? With my dog. Right. And we were gotten in the... Uh, Parking lot well. Can you name the guy? I mean, can you name the guy? Uh, well, his name, yeah, his name is Machado. Oh, he worked for the CIA? He, he, he was the Army version, worked with them. Oh, DIA. DIA. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I was down in the embassy and uh, got in the parking lot. And one day I had my dog tied to the fence. I was talking to this young lady at the, uh, at the gates. Yeah. And across the street from the gate is this apartment building that's a whorehouse. For a better word, for yeah. For a better a word, brothel. Yeah, well. yeah. Uh, brothel. Okay. <laughs> so we're there bullshitting and talking, and she's trying to, you know, get me to buy her and all that stuff. And some guy uh, on top of the roof takes a couple of shots at me. Bing, Bing, Bing. But in Vietnam, it was weird. You had these zones, no fire zones. Right. Remember That's those? That's true. Yeah. Well, you couldn't return fire. fire. Well, I'm sorry. I'm a kid from Lowell. Somebody hits me, I hit you back. Somebody shoots at me, I shoot back. <laughs> so I riddled this building. <laughs> what machine got right up there? They were screaming, they were yelling, they were people f flying out of the windows and stuff. Of the embassy. Of the embassy, and yeah. the whole thing went under alert, and so I got fired and I got sent back out in the strips of the Air, Air Force <laughs> Base with my dog. <laughs> so how long were you down at the embassy for? Oh, well, about a month. <laughs> <laughs> So you like that duty? Was that good? Were you the only dog handler at the embassy? No, there were you know there were different sections, and they had killer dogs there. Well, you, you know. never know what's coming through that gate. Yeah. These dogs are gonna not hesitate. Right. They're not afraid of gunfire, yeah. Yeah. explosions, right. or anybody. Right. So you, that's did, what you had. When you uh, shut up the building, did you uh, did you eliminate the? Uh, uh, I, I no, they couldn't find anything. Oh. They didn't know. They thought I was crazy. So would you think that was a plant that she was set up to? Uh, no. Uh, no, they just, yeah. just guys taking shots. Just like today in uh, Iraq. Guys mm -hmm. taking pop shots from wherever they are. Yeah. It's, they had no reason to rhyme. Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. But I lived, I, I enjoyed my, my stay downtown. Because right. the best thing about being in a kill dog situation, yeah. which is dogs can only work four days in a row. That's the law. Why is the that? The main law. Wait, even in even in, in, in the, the military in, or any place. Oh, yeah. So as did the handler, I got those three days off too. So I spent my three days downtown. Right. And you ever see the movie Platoon? Yeah, very good. You movie. had the redneck yeah. alcoholics. Yeah. And you had the young wild hippie smoking pot. Well, I was always with those because I hated whiskey. <laughs> So, <laughs> that was a great that was a great movie. I mean, uh, Platoon was a great movie. And it was so anybody, realistic about it, the segregation yeah, of different types of people. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, I mean, uh, what I can remember there was the West Coast crowd and the East Coast crowd, sort of and the redneck Southern crowd. And then there was the red lightning Southern crowd. They liked their Budweiser. Just like the guy, you know, they walk around with that Jack Daniels bottle. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And saying, I don't need that shit. You guys do. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I can face reality. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so that's what the enlisted men did, huh? That's what the enlisted men right. did. And some officers. I had this captain that uh, was a nice guy in the weekends. We'd give him a two-striper shirt and he'd come down with us. Oh, no kidding. Party with us, yeah. Yeah, in town? He didn't want to be an officer. Oh. Yeah. Uh, where, was, where was he from? Do you remember? Or? No, I actually don't. Oh, okay. He was an Air Force officer. He was an Air Force officer at the uh, at the hospital. All right. I think he was a dentist, and uh, but he liked the party, and he came down at my house. We used to have parties all the time. Yeah. For uh, non rednecks. <laughs> so you're talking about basically the West Coast type of people and the East Coast type of people, and you left the people in the middle well, of the I, country. I didn't know any yeah. many West Coast people. Okay. You know, or anybody, but you knew Southerners and Northerners. There was that distinction? Yes. Now, were there any, uh, speaking of Southerners and Northerners, how did the uh, uh, Southerners treat the uh, blacks in the military, did you think? Uh, Hated them. Why, why do you think that? 
I mean, when, from your I think experience. it's inbred. You think so? I think so. You know, and a lot of them don't be like us. They come from the streets too. You know, they probably been fighting black people all their lives. Yeah. Did you, you know? get along with with blacks in the military? I had no problem with anybody who was help. Had a machine gun in their hand and a kill dog, and it was helping me stay alive. And I was helping them stay alive. Okay. We did, had no problem. Did you have any black officers that, that, in those days? No, they I would didn't just, see any. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember any. Yeah, in those days they were just coming into the ranks in regards to being officers. Yeah, I don't remember. There was only about four or five of them with the uh, kill dogs, black people. Very oh, few. Yeah. yeah. A lot of southerners. A lot of southerners, yeah. You know, yeah, guys, you know. I never had three pairs of shoes before. <laughs> so you think Crack that you right up? You think that uh, you think that uh, Kentucky boys? Kentucky, huh? I mean, did it show you uh, different parts of the country, a whole different? Oh, oh, oh culture? absolutely! I mean, it's an eye opener when you meet these people from different. But you know, when you get down, you get down and talking to them, you you always wind up the same way. You like to have a good time whenever you yeah. can. Yeah. You know, we're just about good times. A uh, little different. Yeah. So, I mean, but did you see any prejudice towards... Uh, uh, that's why I stayed downtown. I stayed away from that military life. I still lived like a free low kid in the street. So you had a barbecue in the back and everything? And Oh, uh, no, it was on the third floor. On the third floor. <laughs> yeah. So so you, you, en you enjoyed being... Over there, I, I think. I believe in enjoying whatever, whatever, wherever I am, whatever I can do. I see. I made the best of what I, what I had, and I, I did. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my maids. I enjoyed the hooch, and I enjoyed the guys that I associated with because they were similar to me. Did they uh, teach you discipline in the military? They did, tried. They tried. Did you get any uh, 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 fisticuffs uh, while you were in the military? Oh, no stories? Buku. Yeah? Buku fights. Yeah, tell, tell me Buku. one that you remember. Buku fights. I remember being downtown at this bar, and because I was the Air Force, and the Air Force guys mostly wimpy, and I was down there uh, What drinking. do you mean by wimpy? Tell me what wimpy. They're uh, nice kids, yeah. mummies boys. <laughs> you know, they don't fight. Don't drink, don't smoke. But I was down there, but I did, I'm a little kid. So I went downtown in this bar down here and I was down here drinking and fooling around. There was, you know, strippers and all that stuff. And, and there was a bunch of these river rats. What are river rats? These are these Navy guys you see going oh. up on the boat. Oh. Like an... Um, John Kerry? John, John Kerry, Kerry yeah. Yeah, for lack of a better word. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, the, the audience would know what he did and so forth like that. Well, what's that movie there with Sheehan did? Um, Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now, and yeah. that boat going upstream. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, those guys are pretty rugged. They're out yeah. there for who knows, beard, long yeah. hair. And they were down there, and they were trying to tell me, get out of the way, you little wimp Air Force tank. Oh, easy, yeah, okay. So, they, you know, give me a bunch. And I, I got in a fight with, I mean, they killed me. They beat the hell out of me, but I took about three, four out with me. I don't go easy <laughs> and stuff. But afterwards, they picked me up, they put me down, they liked me, we had drinks, and got bombed all night long, got rested and everything. So you and bonded with these guys? You bonded with these guys, and they found out that I wasn't the average Air Force guy. Yeah. I was a little kid, they found out. <laughs> all right, listen, we have to wrap it up. It was good well, to it was, you It was nice. And, yeah. You know, a lot of these things, I. Yeah. You know, it's funny, as you grow older, you forget a lot of things, yeah. but some things you just never forget. Thank you for coming, mate. Now, yeah. You know. Glad I could help. Yeah. It's all right. That's you great. You can get my son, though. Oh, well, we'll get it. Well, maybe the why next time. Why are you wearing it?